So here we are going to solve one more problem on the design of squirrel cage rotor. A three-phase, two-pole, 50 hertz squirrel cage induction motor has a rotor diameter 0 0.20 meter and core length 0.12 meter. The peak density in the air gap is 0.55 Weber per meter square. The rotor has 33 bars each of resistance 125 micro ohm and a leakage inductance of 2 micro henry. The slip is 6 percentage. Calculate the peak value of current in each bar, the rotor copper loss, rotor output and torque exerted. Neglect the resistance of end rings. Okay. So here as the first part, we have to calculate the peak value of current in each bar. So when we have been asked to calculate the rotor bar current, we will first think of this particular equation. So we know this particular equation that is rotor bar current IB is equal to 0 0.85 into IS into 60S divided by SR. But there is no data to calculate the stator current IS or the, uh, the stator turns per phase TS. So we understand that we cannot use this particular equation. And then we have to think of the next alternative. So how can we calculate the current in the rotor bar? Is there any other way to calculate the current flowing through the rotor bar? So now we can simply think of Ohm's law. So we know that current flowing through any conductor can be calculated as I is equal to V by R. Or if we are dealing with AC, I is equal to V by Z. Okay. So here we can calculate the current in the rotor bar as EMF induced in the rotor bar divided by impedance of the bar. Okay. We are simply going to apply the Ohm's law. I is equal to V by Z. Okay. So now, how can we calculate the EMF induced in the bar? Okay. So, all of us are aware about the principle of operation of an induction motor. So, we know that an EMF is induced in the rotor conductors due to the relative velocity between the stator magnetic field and the rotor. So, there is a relative velocity. Okay. So, then we can say that the EMF induced in the rotor is the, the dynamically induced EMF. So, it is due to the relative velocity between the stator magnetic field and the rotor. So, that EMF is a dynamically induced EMF and we know the equation for the dynamically induced EMF. So, we have dynamically induced EMF E is equal to BLV sin theta. So, here we, we are asked to calculate the peak value of current in each bar, the maximum value of current. So, then it will be equal to maximum value of induced EMF divided by impedance. So, we are considering the maximum value of induced EMF. So, the induced EMF is BLV sin theta and the maximum value is BLV. Okay, so here it is the maximum value of induced EMF, BLV, where B is the flux density, L is the length of the conductor and V is the velocity of the conductor. Okay, so here as this EMF is induced in the rotor due to the relative velocity between the stator magnetic field and rotor, instead of this velocity V, we have to substitute the relative velocity between stator magnetic field and rotor conductor. Okay. So, we know that the rotor is the rotating part and because of that we cannot substitute this V as the rotor velocity. The EMF induced in the rotor conductor will be proportional to the relative velocity between the stator conductor and sorry stator magnetic field and rotor conductor. So, this V should be the relative velocity and this is not simply the velocity of the rotor. Okay. So, note that point. This is not the rotor velocity. 
but the relative velocity between stator magnetic field and the rotor okay so now the value of b which is directly given here the maximum flux density is 0.55 now the length of the rotor bar length of the rotor conductor or the rotor bar will be same as that of the rotor length the length of the rotor core that is 0.12 meter okay so rotor length of rotor bar as well as the length of rotor core will be the same so b and l are known <coughs> now we need to know the value of v that is relative velocity between stator magnetic field and rotor conductor in meter per second okay so let us see how we can calculate this one so what is the velocity of the stator magnetic field so we can calculate the speed in rps okay the rotational speed in rps so we know that stator magnetic field revolves at synchronous speed and synchronous speed is 2f by p in rps it is 2f by p or in rpm it is 120f by p so when converting to rps the synchronous speed is equal to 2f by p frequency is 50 hertz and number of poles is 2 so it will be 2 into 50 divided by 2 that is 50 rps so this is the revolutional speed of the stator magnetic field now how can we calculate the rotor speed so the rotor speed is 1 minus s into ns we need this we know these relations okay so we know that the rotor is running at a speed which is less than the stator magnetic field less than the synchronous speed and while studying synchronous and induction machines we have already studied these relations that is rotor speed is equal to 1 minus s into ns the synchronous speed so rotor speed in rps is equal to 1 minus s into the synchronous speed in rps so here slip is given as 6 percentage so s will be equal to 0.06 and we will get the rotor speed as 47 rps okay so we got the synchronous speed that is speed of the stator magnetic field and speed of the rotor so now we need to calculate the relative speed between these two that is 50 minus 47 so relative speed between stator magnetic field and rotor is what 3 rps and here we have considered the peripheral speed sorry the revolutional speed into the linear velocity so we know that in bl in the equation blv sin theta v is denotes the linear velocity of the conductor in meter per second so here we have the uh, the relative velocity between relative speed between stator magnetic field and rotor in rps but we have to convert it into rp m sorry not rpm meter per second sorry our v in the equation blv sin theta is the linear velocity in meter per second so we have to convert the relative velocity between stator magnetic field and rotor obtained in rps to meter per second okay so how can we calculate the revolutional speed in rps to meter per second for that we can simply calculate the peripheral speed so the peripheral speed is in meter per second we know that so let us calculate the peripheral speed from the rotational speed in rps okay so either we can individually calculate the peripheral speed of the stator stator magnetic field pi d ns and peripheral speed of the rotor that is pi d nr then subtracting these two values we will get the relative velocity between stator magnetic field and rotor conductor in meter per second or otherwise here we can simply calculate the relative velocity as 3 rps then calculate the relative velocity as pi into d into that 3 3 rps pi d into 3 rps otherwise we can 
individually calculate the peripheral speed of the stator field and peripheral speed of the rotor in RPS then subtract the values to get the relative velocity of the rotor bar with respect to stator magnetic field. So here we will obtain it as 1.89 meter per second. Now we can simply calculate the maximum value of induced EMF BLV that is 0 0.55 into 0 0.12 the length of conductor is equal to length of rotor core that is 0 0.12 meter into the relative velocity 1.89 <coughs> and the value of the induced EMF is 0 0.125 volt. So now we have to divide it by the impedance. The induced EMF divided by impedance gives the rotor bar current. So impedance is equal to square root of R square plus XL square. Okay. So this is an induction machine. So we have to take attention while calculating the value of XL, the reactance of the rotor bar. So usually we will calculate XL as 2 pi FL. The inductive reactance is equal to 2 pi FL but as this is an induction motor and the and we are dealing with a conductor in the rotor we have to consider the slip frequency the rotor is having the slip frequency so instead of 2 pi fl we need to consider the frequency as s into f the slip frequency so we will get the leakage reactance as 37.7 micro ohm so we can calculate Z as square root of 125 square plus 37.7 square that is 130.6 micro ohm. That's the value of impedance. Now current in each bar is equal to induced EMF divided by impedance. So here impedance in micro ohm is converted to ohm. And IB is equal to 957.1 ampere. Okay. So this is the maximum value of current in each bar. So in the first part we have been asked to calculate peak value of current. So we have completed that part. And in the second part we have to calculate the rotor copper loss. Okay. So for that we need to know the RMS value of the rotor bar current. So we know that RMS value is equal to maximum value divided by root 2. So we have calculated the RMS value of rotor current, rotor bar current that is 676.8 amperes. Now the rotor copper loss. The second part we have to calculate rotor copper loss and we know that copper loss is equal to I square into R. So in case of rotor bar it is IP square into RB. Bar current square into resistance of each bar. So this will give the copper loss in a single bar and the total rotor copper loss will be equal to the number of rotor bars into copper loss in each bar. That is SR into IB square RB. The number of rotor slots is given as 33 into IB square into RB. The resistance of each bar in O gives the rotor copper loss that is 1890 watt. So what is next? We have to calculate the rotor output. Okay. So for that we should know this particular relation. So you may have already studied this relation in the paper synchronous and induction machines. So let us by heart this equation for now. That is rotor copper loss divided by rotor output is equal to S divided by 1 minus S whereas is the slip. Okay. Even if you don't remember this equation, just by heart this for solving the rotor design problems. Rotor copper loss divided by rotor output is equal to S divided by 1 minus S. So from here we can write the rotor output as rotor copper loss into 1 minus S divided by S. That is 1890 into 1 minus 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.06 that is 29.61 kilowatt rotor output is 29.61 kilowatt and as the last part we have to calculate the torque exerted so we have the value of power 
and we know the the relation between torque and power that is power is equal to omega t omega t p is equal to omega t or torque is equal to power divided by omega that is 29.61 kilowatt in the thousand gives the power in watt divided by omega that is 2 pi f 2 pi into 50 that is 100.3 newton meter which is the torque exerted by the rotor so we have calculated all the required parameters